The world is full of mysteries, but some of them actually leave you thinking if anything is even real. Could it be my last meal? Or is some paranormal force looking at me right now, thinking how to end it all for me? I mean, aren't there too many of those scary tales of people dying mysteriously? And what if something like this happens during a war? It'd be even more weird because, duh, aren't people already against each other? Why does another force have to intervene? Well, today I have a story from the Winter War and you are not ready for it. Let's get started. Oh, and I have some other stories to tell you as well. The background. It all happened during the Winter War. The war that sparked between Finland and the Soviet Union in November of 1939. Until the 19th century, Finland had been a part of the Kingdom of Sweden. Later, Russia got hold of the territory in 1809 and turned it into an autonomous buffer state. Now, up until the end of the 19th century, Finland was doing fine since it enjoyed wide autonomy as a part of Russia. But things changed as soon as Russia started to try to assimilate Finland. This was to be done in order to strengthen the central government and with the motive of Russification. Even though the attempts were of no use as they were aborted, the bond between Finland and Russia had already been ruined. Later, World War I led to the fall of the Russian Empire during the Russian Revolution in 1917. On the 15th of November 1917, the Russian government announced that the minorities had the right to self-determination, which meant that the smaller territories could now choose if they wanted to create a separate state. Finland took the opportunity and announced its independence on the 6th of December 1917. About three weeks after the declaration, the Soviet Union also recognized the country, but it wasn't until a four-month-long civil war between the conservative whites and socialist reds that Finland finally achieved full sovereignty. From the Finnish Civil War to the early 1930s, Finland witnessed a politically unstable time period. The main reason was the continued rivalry between the whites and the reds. But that is a whole different discussion. The question is, if the Soviet Union had accepted and recognized the new Finnish government, then what exactly led to the Winter War? Apparently, the Soviet Union was involved in the Finnish Civil War of 1918. However, even after being found guilty, there was no peace treaty signed. In 1918 and 1919, Finnish volunteers led two military incursions across the Soviet borders, but both of them only turned into failed attempts. The ideology behind these incursions was to create Greater Finland and bring the Baltic Finnic people into one state. Later, in 1920, another thing happened that would later become one of the main reasons behind the Winter War. The Finnish communists who were in Soviet Russia attempted to assassinate Marshal Karl Gustav Emil Menahein. In October of the same year, the Treaty of Tartu was signed, confirming that the old border would be the official border between Finland and Russia. Due to this treaty, the Petsamo province also went to Finland. And now, the Finnish government was in charge of the ice-free harbour on the Arctic Ocean. It's also important to note that this treaty didn't really help bring peace between the two countries. The Finnish government was still sending volunteers across the border so that they could support the East Karelian uprising in Russia in 1921. And to get revenge, the Soviets planned a cross-border raid known as the Pork Mutiny, which happened in 1922. The mistrust between the countries continued for years and didn't let them settle the conflict. Finland was adamant that Russia was trying to expand its territory, while Soviet Union was afraid that Finland will become a base for the enemies. The Soviet Union, even after several treaties, continued to demand concessions, while Finland kept delaying and used this time to mobilize its army and get help from the Western Allies and Sweden. The Winter War In 1939, when the Soviet leader Joseph Stalin was trying to expand the Russian influence over Eastern Europe, he demanded that the Finnish border with Russia be moved back by 16 miles. Not just that, he also demanded that the Finnish government hand over several islands to Russia and lease the Hanko Peninsula so that the Soviets could build a naval base there. In exchange, they promised to give a big part of their territory. But well, something was suspicious and the Finns knew it. So naturally, they turned down the offer. Several negotiations were done, but none of them worked. And on the 30th of November, 1939, the Red Army invaded Finland. And just so you know, the Soviet troops had over half a million people in them. 
The Soviets were bigger in number, but the Finnish army, despite being small and under-resourced, was super resilient. Their leaders were great, and that was just another reason why they were able to continue fighting against the Red Army. But it was just a matter of time before the Red Army had more power in its hands. In February 1940, the Soviets overran the Finnish defenses, weakening the Finns. The following month, Finland finally agreed to peace terms and ended up ceding 11% of its territory to Russia. Even though the country lost a big part of its land, it was still able to maintain its independence. The Soviets, however, paid a big price for their victory. Their forces suffered big losses as over 300,000 casualties were reported. One might think that all these casualties were caused by the Finnish fighters, but that's not entirely true. During this war, something eerie happened one night, which resulted in a mysterious massacre of one of the Soviet divisions. The event is still considered unexplainable. So let's talk about what happened that night. The mysterious death of the Soviet division. Before I start, it's important to note that the information about this certain event has been scarce, and the government made sure that none of the information got out. During the Winter War, one of the Soviet divisions entered the Finnish territory, and what they witnessed there will always remain a horrible mystery for many. Something so horrible happened that even the Soviet soldiers who were fully trained and prepared to fight off any enemy were caught off guard and got killed. This is the tale of the Night of Horrors, when several soldiers lost their lives, and the government didn't even reveal the reason behind their deaths later on. In fact, it was such a weird experience that the story still creates a sense of fear among the armies. The Soviet division in question had set up its camps in a forest in the Finnish territory. It is said that while setting the camps, many had heard weird and eerie voices. Some even complained about it, however. All the concerns were dismissed, thinking that it was either some wild animal or just something their minds were making up because of stress and exhaustion. But well, only if they had considered those noises as warnings, because someone was definitely there to hunt them down, an enemy they couldn't see nor could they fight against it, because the accounts state that it wasn't humans that had attacked the Soviets in the dark of the night. In fact, it's also stated that it wasn't even some animal because obviously if it was, they would have been able to fight against it. But despite their great training, the Soviet soldiers couldn't face this unseen enemy and the chaos it created ultimately leading to a massacre of an unimaginable scale, leaving a mystery for everyone to be solved. Several bodies were found without even a single injury, yet still lifeless, while others were pretty badly injured, and it definitely wasn't the work of a human. The investigation wasn't easy either, because the ones left alive were so in shock that they couldn't even tell what happened that night. The autopsies of the dead soldiers didn't reveal much either, and the whole scene was simply left with a bunch of assumptions and theories. Some said that the division was probably attacked by some supernatural force, while others believed that the Soviet soldiers developed some psychological issue that led to their untimely death. The theories were crazy, so much so that some even said that it was the Finnish government that led some psychological operations on the soldiers. In fact, the Finnish government was blamed for this massacre, however, they fully denied any involvement in the whole thing. But no matter how one puts it, the truth stays unclear. I'll discuss the different theories in a while. But first, let's see what the eyewitnesses had to say. As I stated earlier, the ones who survived this mysterious massacre were left in shock. They were traumatized to the point that it was almost impossible to get them to give a proper account of that night. The accounts that were gathered were either not understandable or they clashed with another survivor's account. Some witnesses claimed that they saw something that moved at a speed that no human could ever achieve, and it had to be something supernatural. While others said that they heard dreadful sounds even though the accounts were not very detailed, one thing was common in all of them. A sense of fear. Everyone in that place felt that eerie feeling of being watched. So, what was it? When no one was able to give a proper explanation about the events of that night, people came up with different theories. The most common belief is that wild animals were responsible for this massacre. But then, there are people who raise questions about the soldiers' ability to fight. Couldn't they fight against animals? I mean, the Red Army was known to be brutal. Then what in the world happened that night that didn't let them fight off the animals? Which goes on to confirm that it wasn't the work of any animal. Then there are the people who believe that Finland was being protected by the forest spirit. In Finnish mythology, Tapio is believed to be the Finnish forest spirit or god. And just so, you know, it's believed that the hunters used to pray to him before hunting. Finnish people believe that Tapio and his wife Mieliki protect the forests of the country, 
and the Soviets spent the night in the woodland, which is why they were killed. After all, the spirits couldn't see the enemy march into their country like that, but was it really the spirits, or just the harsh conditions that marked the death of all those soldiers? The Winter War was not easy. It was especially harsh on the soldiers because the weather would drop by minus 40 degrees Celsius. The soldiers often didn't even have food to eat and were practically fending for themselves. This could have been the cause of death for those soldiers. Some people even believe that at night, the elites of Finland would go out and cut the throats of the Soviets in order to help keep their country safe. The wildest of all the theories, however, remains that Finland used psychological warfare against the Red Army. The reason why I call it the wildest is because psychological warfare requires time to be used. It's not something like a gun that can be used in a matter of seconds. Yes, it's possible that fake circumstances were created to confuse these soldiers, and using their confusion, the enemy benefited and slaughtered all of them mercilessly. But at the end of the day, it still remains a mystery. No one has been able to conclude what caused the tragedy and what those soldiers did to get them to meet a fate like that. After knowing this, I know one thing. I'm never going into any of Finland's forests like that ever. Who knows what kind of a beast actually dwells there. At the end of the day, it's safe to say that something not so human probably attacked these soldiers and left a story for everyone to tell and ponder. But this wasn't the only eerie incident to have happened over the years. During He World War II alone, there were several incidents that stay a mystery and are yet to be solved. Flight 19 and its mysterious disappearance. This incident happened a little after World War II had ended, a flight had disappeared. This was the flight that became the basis of the whole theory behind the Bermuda Triangle. The plane was training Ur, the infamous part of the ocean, when five Grumman TBM Avenger torpedo bombers lost contact with the headquarters. Because of this, a Martin PBM Mariner was also launched. But guess what? The Mariner also vanished. The wreckage was never found, nor did they ever find the bodies of the people. Navy investigators spent day and night looking for Flight 19 and the Mariner, but none were found. The Dyatlov Pass Incident this incident was pretty similar to what happened to the Soviet division in the forests of Finland. But here the ones involved were actually Soviet hikers who were in the northern Ural Mountains between February 1st and 2 in 1959. All nine of the hikers died in the mountains under circumstances that stay unexplained. The trekking group was experienced in going on such adventures and was led by Igor Dyatlo. They established a camp on the eastern side of Kolat Syaki. However, the night they spent there was nothing less than a horror movie. During the night, something happened that caused all of them to leave their camps and run. And it's important to note that none of these hikers were wearing clothes that were adequate for the sub-zero temperature. After discovering their bodies, an extensive investigation was launched. Autopsies revealed that three of them had succumbed to death because of hypothermia but the other three were actually killed. One of those who were killed had a skull injury. Two people had severe chest trauma, while another had a cracked skull. This isn't even the worst part. Four hikers were found dead in a creek. Three had their face and head soft tissue severely damaged. And then there were two bodies whose eyes were missing. One had an eyebrow gone, while the other didn't have his tongue in his mouth. No solid answer was there. And at the end, the investigation was concluded by saying that a compelling natural force was the one to cause all these weird and mysterious deaths. To this day, many believe that it was not a human who caused these deaths, but instead, something that humans haven't seen yet. Angels of Mons. This story is another one claiming that the British Army got help from some supernatural forces. In August 1914, the first engagement of the British Expeditionary Force occurred at the Battle of Mons. And on the 25th of August, an account was published in a British magazine talking about a supernatural force. According to the story, the force intervened and helped the British at a very important moment. Not just that, many other similar accounts were recorded after this. Some described the force as the medieval longbow archers along with St. George, while others said that it was a luminous loud. And finally came the version that got the most popularity 
the one where people saw angelic warriors helping the British army. Now, I can't say if the stories were real, but divine intervention wouldn't come as a surprise if you're a religious person. The Coravina group and their mysterious death. No one wants to die in the cold, that too mysteriously. But this group of tourists met a tragic end in Kazakhstan. The group of tourists was being led by a professional climber, Lyudmila Korovina, and no one in the group was expecting to die there. The group was traveling across the Chamadaban mountain range on the 2nd of August 1993, when the weather started getting bad. Rain was pouring down along with snow, which made it super difficult for them to continue the journey. Yet still, they managed to continue the journey safely until the 5th of August. There were seven people in the group, and during the descent, six people had already died. The only survivor? A woman named Valentina Utochenko. She later revealed in her statement that during the descent, they reached a point when it was impossible to look further. During this time, one of the group members fell down and had foam coming out of the mouth while the ears were also bleeding. Other people in the group who ended up dead had also developed similar symptoms. All six of them died almost at the same time, while Valentina was the only one left there. And just so you know, she was also pretty much unconscious and barely managed to reach the river at the bottom when she was rescued by some kayaking tourists. The bodies of the deceased group members were retrieved from the mountain and were sent for autopsy. But here's where things get crazy. According to the autopsies, there were signs of hypothermia and protein deficiency, but this wasn't something that explained why Korovina was leading the group down the bare upper arm of the ridge. After all, there was a very easy route down the woodland-covered trail. Why was there so much bleeding and the fact that the group suffered from a protein deficiency, when in reality, they were very well fed? Another thing that raised questions was how it was possible for all six of them to die in a few minutes. And if the condition was so bad, how on earth did Valentina survive? To top that off, the sole survivor of this incident also acted the same way the survivors from the Soviet divisions did. She avoided the questions and only said that it was her great physical health that helped her make it out alive from there. But honestly, I don't think she's been telling the truth. The Shatayeva group. And here's another story from the mountains. But just so you know, this group wasn't comprised of any inexperienced people. But instead, there were professional climbers who fell victim to this mysterious tragedy. Led by Elvira Shatayeva, one of the most famous climbers of all USSR, this group was set to conquer the 7000er. And here's the interesting part. All the climbers in this group were women, and this was one of its kind adventure. In August 1974, the group started their ascend on August 5th and also reported their progress to base camp, but they still had to go back, and that's what was the most difficult thing to do. The weather wasn't good, and the group was forced to spend the night on Pik Lenina. However, the next day, the weather got even worse, and Shatveya reported that one of the members had fallen sick and had been vomiting the whole day. On August 7th, the group was struck by a heavy blizzard, and they lost everything, including their tents. Not only that, two of the members also died right there. Another member had died just a while before the blizzard, and it was reported that she had also fallen sick in the same way. The last time anyone heard from the group was these lines. There are two of us left. We are all out of strength. In 15 to 20 minutes, we will be no more. Sounds like a normal accident, right? But here's where the mystery enters. Journalist and climber Anatoly Fapontov wrote in his book that in the panoramic shots of the site, a kettle can be seen sitting on the rock. If a blizzard had hit, then why was the kettle still there? And the torn tents don't even look like a blizzard did at all. Instead, it looks more like a human deed. Not only that, one of the nearby groups also testified that no blizzard ad hit the site, and it wasn't exactly how it was being told to the world. The death of this group also remains a mystery because none of the members survived to tell the tale. The legacy. Such incidents happen all around the world, and most people believe that it's always some supernatural forces involved in these incidents. Mysterious death and unexplained events leave us thinking if we humans are the only beings with a mind to think living in this world. Or are there some hidden creatures who, when exposed, 
aren't shy of removing the proof. While every other story has some sort of explanation, the Soviet division dying in the night in such a horrific way will always stay the worst possible story. And that was all for today, everyone. What do you think might have happened in these incidents? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.